Okay. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, that was me in the middle. It's been a crazy Monday morning, I guess. I guess I'm not doing well in sleep, plus Zoom is misbehaving. Okay. So like I was going through now that we're recording, um, the information's here on LearnCo homepage, timeline, question doc, the link to the playlist. Um, so I'll put the recordings here. You know, you can see these are from like the first time we met, it's from like the, everything from this week. And I'll just keep throwing it in here. That way, if you guys, you have one central place to find it. Um, I make the videos public just so it's easy to find. So like, if you for a reason like can't figure out how to get this LearnCo homepage, that's fine too. Also, um, if you if you want to go over any stuff like I do have some recordings I specifically have done like it doesn't really matter like if you find it useful you find it not but I try to make I just try to make the videos public so that way you guys can find it easily um, but there's also do you guys know the student resources page I'm kind of going a little on a tangent here but do you guys know the student resources page I'm talking about like a list of videos and such yeah I, I see some nods okay cool so I know it's changed that's why I bring it up. Um, there used to be this guy and see deprecated because for some reason we don't put, no, we're not putting it in here anymore. So I think the new version, you guys have a link to the new version now. Does it ring a bell to anyone? I don't know if that's. I think I've seen this like at the start, but I think I had the deprecated version here. Yeah, yeah. deprecated version should have all this stuff. Um, let me pull up the current version. And the thing is too, the current version happened while I was out on uh, parental leave. So, <laughs> of course, I'm like, I don't remember the link to it. So, oops, that's oh, been there. Like in the it, same spreadsheet, like down on the bottom. Oh, is it down here somewhere? I thought they were all like. Yeah. Here, I have the direct link. I just know it's on my other cohorts page. Of course, I have so many cohorts. What is, what are they? January. Sorry, everyone. I feel like now I'm taking extra time. There we are. Okay. I know there's just a link in here. That's why I bring it up. All right. Keep discussion. There it is. Okay. There we go. So this is the current link. You guys, have you guys seen this one? Okay. Uh, uh, I see some head shakes. I see some nods and I see some head shakes. So. Let me just go ahead and share this to you guys. Uh, I just put on the Zoom chat. So this, like, honestly, the deprecated version has pretty much all the videos from before. Um, new videos should be uploaded here, but there's also some other resources as well um, that other instructors have put together. Um, there's a little bit of a search. Uh, you can kind of play around with it, but um, it's not ideal because you're supposed to delete this which is the last person didn't. And you can see all the, like, the links and stuff of different videos and such. So if, especially if you're going through your capstone, and you're like, oh, like, has someone talked about this before? It might be useful to kind of go through here. For example, time series is a lot more prominent in um, the curriculum as well as like uh, convolutional neural nets um, was a little bit more prominent in the sense other than the appendix. So there's sometimes lessons for the past like year um, that are on here. And so you can kind of like search through these things and see like what's available. So it can be useful, especially because it's like directly referencing the curriculum that we're talking through versus like trying to it. But of course, if you find other resources that work well for you, like use those, like don't feel like you have to be restricted to just one set. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so anyway, I have that, I have information on there. Here's student resources. Um, we had no new questions for today. So yeah, I think I have a little agenda for today, so. Unless you guys had any questions about the stuff I went over. I meant stuff, no. I think you guys pretty much know. You, you guys are into this like a few months, so you guys <laughs> should know how to navigate everything and find stuff. All right, um, some admin stuff. So I wanted to ask about uh, stand-ups for the future. So we've been, sounds really cool, stand-ups for the future. But um, for stand-ups, you guys have been doing stuff like that. I wanted to ask you guys how you guys would like to proceed with it. So um, to be frank, this is a little bit of an experiment for us here at the online team of seeing like, okay, like uh, we had an instructor who is um, like leads the cohort mostly. And then like seeing like well, what, what we go move on the capstone and having basically more instructors kind of like focusing on this. So I'm kind of like open to ideas and such stuff like this. Um, but one thing is like, I know uh, Raphael would do standups with you guys, you know, at daily, right? And everything like that. And you guys respond on Slack. Um, 
would you guys like to continue that thing? Um, usually with my cohorts, when I like would lead them to this point, usually at this point, I'd kind of like put it on the cohort to kind of like make the stand-ups themselves, how they want to use it, how they find it useful. And to be honest, some cohorts find it really like useful. Other cohorts are like, eh, not really that exciting, not something they really want to do at this point. Um, but I want to ask you guys, like, um, what your guys' feelings or um, just ideas on stand-ups on Slack. Do we continue them? Do you guys want to leave them yourself? Uh, I prefer still doing the, the Slack method. Um, it's just uh, my thoughts. It's not a huge interruption to a work day. And then maybe if someone sees your response and they're working on the same thing, or if you see it and you could just comment, you know, what you could help with if applicable. Yeah, thanks, Erica, for sure. Anyone else? I find sometimes as well the daily one is a bit you're like struggling to, because every day you're struggling to come up with something to say, you're just like making stuff up. So maybe even like every second or third day and you actually have kind of something to tell rather than just kind of making something up to be able to write it down. That's a good point. I do think sometimes um, I, I've had students where like they will say like, you know, their stand up and then they kind of get a little down on themselves because like nothing's changed from the day, day before. And they're like, oh, like I'm still working on the same stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe we can think about like Slack burnout, or not Slack burnout, but stand-up burnout. Um, yeah, that's a good thing to think of. Um, any, any other thoughts? Just whatever pops in your head. Maybe a quick thumbs up. Like, my, well, let me just ask. Uh, who would like to continue stand-ups with Slack? Like, yeah, just having so stand-up? Yeah, I guess that was what my question was gonna be. What, what are we trying to get out of stand up? Are you trying to get out of something or is it really just for us? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so I, I'll be, I'll be, I like to be upfront as possible, right? So usually with stand ups for me as an instructor, I like to emphasize them really early on because it gets me to know what you guys are doing, you know, how things are going on and stuff like this. And so it helps me get an idea of what's going on. And then as the kind of curriculum or the program goes through, I kind of get to know more of the people that are in the cohort. So I kind of know a little bit like where people are. I'll message them, you know, we're kind of talking a little bit. We see each other during study groups. So it'll get a little bit easier to understand where everyone's at. Um, so at this point in my head, the standups are not so much for me anymore. They're much more for you guys. And so some people find them like useful. I mean, like, oh, it just kind of keeps me, you know, like just kind of reflect on my day of like, okay, what have I, what am I doing today? What have I done yesterday or, you know, earlier today or whatnot? Um, and then the other part, like I think Erica mentioned is that it's nice to sometimes see if like someone else is working on the same stuff um, and just having that place to share. So really what I'm get, getting at is like, would you guys just like to continue this forward or is it something that seems more like just an extra thing that just it's not um, beneficial? So uh, uh, tell you, yeah, yeah, to me, I, I think it is just kind of a, another extra thing. Um, I, but of course, that's me. I, I kind of do this routinely, you know, kind of stand up with myself every morning, things of that mm -hmm. nature. But uh, I, if you're not explicitly getting out of any, getting anything out of it, that's just my two cents from my point of view. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I, I do think it's just another thing. And I think to be honest, like that's where the spectrum goes, right? I think I'm, I'm hoping at this point, when you guys are kind of like doing your capstone, you guys now have the internal like tools to help you reflect on your day and to reflect on what needs to get done and such. And hopefully you guys have developed this a little bit over the past few months, right? Um, and like, the way I like to think about it is like, after graduation, like there's not gonna be in the same sense of the cohort, you know, that is like proceeding forward. Like it's gonna be a lot more on you and then you'd have your own job where, you know, you in a lot of ways do have to kind of manage yourself because maybe, whatever job you have, even if it's a great job, might not have the management that you would like in the sense to like tell you what things you need. So that's kind of why I put on you guys and what you guys want to come up from this. So that's why I'm bringing it up just because um, to be quite frank, uh, Raphael asked like, hey, are you still gonna do standups? And I'm like, like, well, like I kind of like, kind of like go away from that and just let students do it if they would like. And like, like when I say do it, I mean like lead it themselves too. Cause like, I feel like I don't need to impose that on you guys anymore. But if you guys, overall feel like, yeah, just put it on there. And maybe it's something like, oh, if you don't want to, you don't have to respond. That's fine. If you feel, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to get a, a good, idea, like some, like just taking the temperature of the room of like, 
how people feel about stand-ups and stuff. Does that make sense? I didn't know that the stand-ups were for us. I thought they were like a way for Ralph to like see where people were. Oh, so okay. like I didn't well, know we because I've never gotten but unless it's like specifically personally like on like 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 I don't particularly gain anything most days from it because I oh I thought it was more of a but I suppose if if we do it like um like do it every day but then you're not obliged to respond every time perhaps it's a good way of doing it yeah okay that's definitely an option like I I think and this is where like every instructor is a little bit different on like what their emphasis and focus is on too. I like that. I agree with Megan. That idea is something we should implement. Okay, cool. So um, just give me a thumbs up then. Would you guys like to have stand up? Keep going. Um, tell you what, I'll say thumbs up. You're like, yeah, I would like to have this. Um, sideways, you're just like, I don't really care either way. Thumbs down, it's like, ah, that's more annoying than anything else. <laughs> um, hopefully no one's too annoyed by anything. But uh, go ahead, ready, you vote. Okay, so I see a couple like thumbs up, some side, most mostly sideways. So I'll tell you what, um, how would you guys feel like uh, the people who gave thumbs up especially, would you guys like to kind of start that off or I can, and we would just make it more optional, would that be a good like place to be at? Yeah. Okay. I see some nods. <laughs> I, I, I think I see mostly nods. I don't think I see too many confused looks. Um, so I'll tell you what, I, I will kind of like, kind of tomorrow, I will kind of start it off. And then if um, for the future, like after tomorrow, so like, I guess what's it, tomorrow's Wednesday? No, today's Wednesday. So on Friday, um, if someone wants to kind of just like start it off, especially if you guys get benefit from it, and then people can respond if they want. Um, I have a different structure maybe than Rafael had. Like, honestly, I feel like I maybe need to look a little closer to like what past standups look like. But um, my, my usually thing is like, what have you, like, what have you finished that you are proud of or, you know, like you're happy about completing already? So that could be like, you know, yesterday or, you know, earlier in the day. Um, and that doesn't have to be honestly related to like the, like the flat iron program itself. It can just be something, hey, like I did this thing, like I replaced my washing machine, like awesome, you know, this is a great day. Um, so I think it's kind of helps like reflecting, but like, what have you done? What have you completed? What do you hope to do with your second part? And then the third part being like, what's the thing that's blocking, like, or what are some potential like roadblocks that might happen today? Um, so for example, a classic one, people say like, did not sleep very well. Like, you know, just feel a little off today. Um, and I see we're like, you know, I have other things in my mind or, you know, like, you know, I think there's this one aspect that I'm trying to work on and I think it's just going to be this big roadblock. And I think that helps a little bit just mentally going through and kind of like in your day, like, you know, like I think Blake mentioned, like he already does like, you know, a little bit of a stand up for himself. Um, it helps a lot just to kind of like think about what are the things that you need to get done? What are the things you did do and what things are going to be blocking you? So sound pretty good. All right, cool. I'm glad no one had too strong of opinions on uh, standups and stuff like that. Um, so <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll start off tomorrow's standup and then do we have any volunteers who wanna to try to do Friday and then from then on just whoever does stand up first. I'll be out of town Friday. I'll, I don't know, I'll try to remember, but if anyone <laughs> but me, <laughs> <laughs> remember before I do I won't be offended yeah I, I think a good one is just like if you see there's no stand-up done today and you're just like yeah just you what I'll do literally do is just copy and paste the same stand-up I did and just post that out there works too <laughs> um and I think it's just a good place just to say what people want to share um, and stuff like that. okay cool all right so I'll just put a note here I will do this Friday then oh no Thursday my days are all maxed up. Thursday, and then anyone after that. An optional. Okay, so don't feel like, don't feel pressured you have to share or something like that. But I think it does help a little bit. Even if you like see this stand up and just like think about it, I think that's a good thing. All right, so um, office hours, scheduling hours. Oh, so, okay. So I wanted to ask you guys this, just because I've kind of inherited the time that you guys already had. Um, would if I were to move the time to 2 p.m. Eastern time, what are your guys' initial reactions to that? Like, cool, whatever, or 
Like, oh, I can't make that time. Is it now, Eastern? <laughs> what time? I'm sorry? <laughs> what time are um, our office hours now? Uh, is it 12? We do our study groups at 1 East or 2 Eastern right now. Yeah, I think our study groups are at that time. What time is it right now? Am I really off today? All right, sorry, I'm Pacific, I'm Pacific time. I messed up, that's why. I'm We're sorry? We're our cohort study groups. Those were at 2. Okay. Oh, you guys have your own cut study groups? I, I don't think we have them anymore, but the, that's what time our groups were scheduled. Oh, I think okay. they still are, though. Brass still doing study groups, is he not? Yeah, he did one yesterday. Sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, I doing another one doing... today. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's doing, doing them. I know he's been doing extra stuff, which I know he won't be doing that at starting next week just because he has a new cohort he has going on. Yeah, they um, were just like bonus ones that he did. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's ever a conflict with, like, even if whatever time we do it, and there's a, like, a global one where someone else is, like, leading something, like, feel free to go attend that one, right? Um, but uh, I was more like saying, like, if we move this office hours to two hours later at 2 p.m. Eastern time, um, that's 11 a.m. Pacific time. With How do you guys feel about that? Yes? No? Don't care. I see something. Nothing else at that time in the end. Well, I'm sorry, Erica, what was that? I guess if there's nothing else at that time, then yeah. I'm on uh, Pacific time, so. Okay, yeah, I know. I, I get thrown up. I have to go off at Eastern time all the time because everyone's everywhere. And I just kind of do the calculation in my head. Okay, no, does anyone have any specific conflicts at that time? Like, I just don't want to move it and find out, like, oh, someone has to be somewhere or do something at that 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so tell you what, um, I'm just looking at the thing. So I know there's a 2 p.m. like, like I know Raphael's doing an, another dashboard study group um, for the whole campus today at 2 p.m. Eastern, right? But I don't think that should interfere anymore from that point. So um, how about starting tomorrow then? We make it 2 p.m. Eastern time, does that work well? And the reason why I'm moving it um, is really because of selfish reasons, because it works better for my schedule versus trying to squeeze things in. Um, but if you, if you guys are okay with that, cool. If not, I can make this work, but if you guys are all right with it, then I'll adjust that. Okay, cool. So yes, yeah, starting Thursday. Okay, so cool. And then um, know that this is still kind of a thing in profit, process um i might i might be gone on the 21st and the 24th um so i think that's not next week but the week after that or i guess it's next week friday and then that monday so really um it doesn't really affect you too much except for that monday um and if you guys want we can kind of move office hours so they kind of scoot it over by one day so we instead of having monday tuesday wednesday thursday we can have tuesday wednesday thursday friday just for that one week so basically we just move mondays office hours to Friday. Um, would that work for people? Or we, we could cancel it. Like, it doesn't matter if you guys have any questions and stuff. But I want to give you guys the opportunity if you guys did have stuff to have that time. Thanks. Cool. All right. Cool. All right. So that's kind of, that's all the admin stuff I really had to like talk about. Um, hopefully, that didn't cause too much confusion. Uh, you guys seem a little like, all right, all right, we'll go with this. Um, but thank you guys for letting me go through that. So. The rest of now is kind of just like, like open to you guys. Like I like to get office hours. Like I like to have at least half of the office hours just to have time for you guys to ask any questions that you guys come up with, whether it's about the capstone you guys are working on, uh, data science in general, or talk about like job stuff. Um, so I didn't see any questions in the doc. So does anyone have any questions they thought of right now or that they wanted to um, go over about capstone and whatnot? Not so much. Is it still early for everyone? Like, <laughs> no. I'm still early in the capstone type. process. Yes. Yeah. I'm still I'm trying to decide between like three different projects. So. so yeah, you have you have the the problem of um, I think we're a lot of data scientists 
like we're like, oh, which one do I go after? Um, <laughs> which isn't necessarily a bad problem, but it can definitely be something that can evolve into something like, oh, just having to make a decision. Um, it's one thing, I don't know if anyone else is in that in situation, uh, like choosing between like one or two or even three projects. Um, if you guys would like, you know, like we can talk about it. If they all seem relatively like there's nothing in particular that makes one stand out more or less than the others, like one decision making tool that I like to use, and you guys are gonna laugh at this, literally just go flip a coin, right? like just like randomly pick. And the reason why is because a lot of times it's like the decisions I'm making between like two or three things in the end, it's like, I don't know which is literally the best one and there's no way to know which would be the best one or even if there is a best one. So in my head, I'm like, well, might as well randomly pick because I don't know and then just pursue that. Um, that's the strategy I use. My wife thinks I'm crazy, um, <laughs> but uh, I find it really useful. Um, or having just someone literally pick for you can be helpful too. I think the big thing is a lot of times if you, usually at this point when you're like really stuck between different stuff, like decisions, it's kind of like, you will be fine no matter what you pick. It's just like, there's just no way you can know more, if that makes sense. Um, but Erica, since you can brought up, you're picking between three projects. So those are the three, I think, just about AI, like bias, and you talk about Python, um, or like black and white to colored pictures, right? Yeah, and then the other um, is more of a um, NLP project where I thought, oh, it can be cool to like build some, I don't know, algorithm that can decipher between Ebonics and like the sentiment place to that. Yeah, no, that's actually a really cool one that you brought up because that is a real issue with um, a lot of NLP sentiment analysis. This is actually one of the things where people talk about sentiments and sentiment analysis can be kind of really biased um, is that it's dependent on where you get your information and like for example ebonics and stuff like this like in casual this language sometimes can also just be vastly miscategorized from sentiment analysis because they basically usually it comes down to the fact that the data that's being collected is not thought of so people don't think about using that part of their um, data set where I would say that's a very valid like form of communication like that's important like a lot of times linguists well i should say a lot of times linguists can vary but a lot of really great linguists really think about um how like it's not so much what is the way to communicate but just how do people communicate and then extracting from there which i think is a very more practical and honestly more useful um this is where i'm going off on a tangent for a second but like you guys know the dictionary right isn't like an authoritative like text it's a descriptive text you guys know what i mean by that difference um so the dictionary puts words that people are using not saying these are the words that you should use does that make sense so as language changes dictionaries change and every once in a while you'll hear people say like they put a word in the dictionary like why did they put that word in the dictionary that's ridiculous that's not proper english and diction and people who write dictionaries like we just are looking at what the words are being used and how they're being used and we put that in the dictionary when they're um in culture has been used enough um this is why for example ain't is in the dictionary and people and you hear english teachers be like oh you can't use the word ain't it's not a real word it's like well people use it and guess what people know um there's a recent one that came out i don't know if you guys heard this um irregardless Ugh. like which i know right that cringe right there they just put that in, I think it was the Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary. And people like, but why? Like, it's not, it's not a real word. It's like, well, people use that word. People understand what that word is. It's a word. <laughs> like, and so it's an interesting, so that's a very, dis it's a descriptive text. Um, I just love telling English teachers that, like English teachers know. I don't know why English teachers tend to be so uptight sometimes, but like, um, I know some English teachers, they're great people, but, um, my favorite thing to say, the dictionary is not really an authoritative text. It's really about describing about what's currently being used in that culture. And it just kind of takes them back. Like, like no, like, they think there's some magical English language that is just like, this is the pure English language and that's what we should use. And it's like, no, language changes. Anyway, um, that project would be really interesting. Um, I would suggest um, there, if you're looking for data scientists who like, I think we talked about this last time, like, like, how do you even find data scientists that like you 
want to like follow and stuff like this. Um, Rachel Tatman, Tatman, Tatman. I have to look it up now. Um, she used to work for Kaggle, but she is really like honestly, really friendly person. Um, and she, yeah, Rachel Tatman. Um, she uh, used to work for Kaggle. Uh, she's a, a linguist for a PhD in linguistics. Um, and does a lot of stuff like with linguistics and stuff. They have, she actually has a, quite a lot of videos that she would make for Kaggle and stuff. Um, that might be someone to follow. Um, Cause I know she's literally talked about this exact research of being like, hey, like how do you include uh, groups that have not been accounted for for a lot of NLP data sets? Um, so that might be a good place to start and stuff. Um, but yeah, so definitely you, like Erica, you definitely have some three really interesting areas and stuff. Um, I would suggest, since it, it being Wednesday and it going into Friday, is maybe take today to like really like just look at like all three of those parts, just kind of say, all right, I'm gonna dedicate two hours to do like, you know, look at this one topic, two hours for this topic, two hours for this topic. And then tomorrow say, okay, like what seems reasonable I can do? And if, you know, what seems maybe a lot more work than it's necessary, like, than it's possible for a capstone, but maybe I continue on later on. And then if you're still stuck between two of them or even all three of them, I would say maybe flip the coin. <laughs> like, um, but I think it, any of those three would be interesting projects. And I think you'd probably have a lot of fun doing it and have some pretty successful projects. So, yeah. Anyone else want to share or talk about their project or? Or thinking about their projects or anything like that. Can we do something where we all like go one at a time and share some ideas? Because I like hearing like other people's ideas. Because yeah, I, I can force people to do things. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do we do that? Uh, if you guys are okay with going around a little bit of saying like you know what you're thinking about and stuff. Um, I think that's a good thing to do because eventually you're going to have to commit to a project, right? So you might as well make it public to our group right now. So uh, Jari, do you want to go first actually since you brought up the idea? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to do something um, generative, like uh, rather than like discriminative, like we talked about yesterday. So either I want to try to make a GAN that will either generate like original art. Um, it's just kind of like getting the art to put into it is kind of weird and I'm still like looking into that or I wanted to do something that would generate stories because um I know Elon Musk the GPT-2 I think it like generates these like you put in a prompt and it'll generate like scary stories and like it's fascinating so I'm, I want to do something either in the like either of those two it's like what I'm cool yeah yeah GPT-2 um I, there's actually now GPT-3 even that oh. just came out the uh, past is it a month, two months now? I spent, I don't know, news, time has no meaning anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, GPT-3 is basically like the enhanced version of GPT-2, mm -hmm. um, which if, I, I saw some nods. Does anybody know what GPT-2 is, GPT-3? Oh, this is some fun stuff too. Um, Jari, you like to bring up all these like really interesting things too. Yeah. Basically, um, it is like Jari said, it's a generative model, uh, it stands for, GPT, I can't remember what, generative something. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but the idea is basically it's learned, um, it's essentially an auto encoder kind of. Um, but the idea there is that you, it's learned a whole bunch by basically like the reason why it's so good at doing stuff is be, basically because it took in a lot of data. And by data, I mean like text data and just fed it into the machine learning model and it learned from that and it finds patterns and then you say basically okay like it's learned like kind of like what how do i say this i should go a little bit extra detail so the idea of this gpt um and generative model like or i should like autoencoders is kind of like what it is is you have your inputs which is like a sentence and you have the sentence and then you have the next word right of that sentence and you basically train the model to say all right, what do you think the next word should be? And then it tries, to, you know, the model early on says, oh, it's this word. It's like, ah, you're wrong, it was this word. And basically you do that a bunch of times and essentially try to guess the word that should have come after. And over time, 
these models develop pattern reckon like basically figure out patterns and stuff in the way people go through. It's actually a little more complicated than that because one of the issues is is that machine learning algorithms tend to forget um, forget what it's told. So they're very forgetful. It's called the vanishing gradient problem. Um, and basically what happens is that it just forgets the old stuff. So you end up losing information. So like a lot of these younger models, like the not GPT-2 um, that weren't as successful, they would start like say, okay, generate text. And it would like, kind of like when you do like um, auto text, where you go like, you know, like auto, not auto correct, but like the thing already suggests the letter or a word, you know what I'm talking about? Like you say like, I am, and then like, there's like three suggestions. You can like very, cold, you know, whatever, and like you just keep putting that, eventually you just end up finding like for a lot of these things, they just end up being nonsense. It's because it forgets what it was previously done. Um, that's what kind of GP2 kind of does is that it's, like, it's trying to guess what the next thing is. It's just really good because it's fed a lot of information. GPT-3 recently came out and basically it's like we, I think it was 13 billion parameters for GPT-2 and GPT-3 <laughs> the big model is 175 billion parameters. Um, so a little bit of an increase, um, significant increase. And so there's some really interesting things. But uh, so Jari, if you want to go in that direction, um, that can definitely, I think you definitely want to look at like sequence to sequence models. So think for current neural networks. Um, autoencoders might be interesting and stuff like that too. And <clears throat> I'm trying to think like, I'm trying to think like the way you want to present this for your capstone, you can talk about this to build it up. And I think an interesting part would be like, okay, like what data you're feeding it into and then developing these different models to see how to make this generate. Um, it's not an easy problem, I, I will say. Yeah. Um, but I think the big thing is, would be looking at how you, how you analyze this information, um, like how you do that analysis and see what people are already doing with generative models like that. I think that either, even if you go in the art direction, I think the big thing is going to be like your analysis. Like, how do you analyze, you know, what is a good generative model and stuff like this? Um, so that might be an interesting one. Um, uh, sorry, a video popped in my head about GPT-2 that I think might be interesting. Um, sorry, I'm typing stuff in right now so I can search for it and send you the link. Um, and this is, this, this is useful for anyone, I think. I think this is about a year ago. Wow, it's only been a year. Okay. So that's GPT-2. Um, there's a little video. This uh, is computer file. I don't know if everyone's seen that on YouTube, um, but this researcher, um, Miles, oh my gosh, what's his name? Miles something. Um, uh, he's an AI researcher. He actually looks at a lot of AI safety, which is not the same thing as AI bias, AI ethics, interesting enough. Um, it's actually about making sure models are safe and what that means and stuff like that. Anyway, um, what you probably want to look at, I think um, the, the curriculum has it in um, the appendix for NLP stuff. That might be kind of start off, but you probably have to go a little deeper into like like autoencoders, transformers and stuff. So there's also this video that kind of does a very high level of like what transformers are. So also from the same person. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Um, but sounds good, Jari. I definitely, like, over this next week, like, Friday, I would definitely, like, want you to have it honed in a little bit of it, exactly what's the project and, like, which one direction you're going and then, like, how, what that looks like, you know? What does that mean for data? What does it look like for your project? Like, just kind of, like, what that process would look like. Okay. 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 Definitely. Cool. Awesome. All right. Um, how are we going to do this next? Uh, who wants to share next, I guess? <laughs> Or do the popcorn method where uh, Jari uh, picks someone. <laughs> um, let's see. Randomly pick. We'll go with Heather. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um I'm still trying to decide what I want to do. Um, I want to. I worked in finance before, so I want to stay in that realm. So I'm really interested in time series and forecasting. Um, that was something that I did before, and I did more of stocks and uh, financial planning. So that's kind of what I was doing, but I was using different programs. So this has all been really interesting for me. Um, 
because we have a program that would do that. And now I can actually kind of customize it and tailor it to what I'm looking for. So I've been really excited about it. Um, I'm not sure. I think I wanted to do some more research on what is trending in, I guess, time series modeling for right now. And then maybe, you know, build something around that just to show that I know the newest thing out. Um, so I'm still trying to decide exactly what I want to do. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, I think if you don't mind me sharing, like, I think Blake messaged me and saying he was kind of doing something like he's along the same lines, like thinking like finance, you know, um, like time series stuff. And this is where I will say, like, I am definitely not someone who is an expert in this area. And um, I like, I know my place, <laughs> like, I'm like, definitely not uh, where I'm at. Um, I can suggest like definitely time series is going to be the thing that you probably want to look a little into. Um, from the last time, I, from my understanding, is that a big thing of using it is like LSTMs, like recurrent, like things like recurrent neural networks, but enhanced architecture with LSTMs. I think, have you guys gone over LSTMs um, in with Raphael in Mod 4? No, I think it's talked about in Mod, um, not Mod 4, the appendix of Mod 4. So it's us, it's talked about in there, excuse me, um, in the context of natural language processing with like, sentences and stuff like this but it's also like if you think of like a sentence a sentence is really a lot of ways like a time series right like in the way you have to like looking at each word and like how each word affects the next part just like in like socks or whatever you're looking at time series it's kind of like the progression of like those elements lead up to your next prediction right so last time i heard like lstms were kind of like the the most like modern way of test like doing some of this analysis i could be completely wrong um to be honest but um that's where you probably want to do some look into stuff um i know kaggle you guys know kaggle.com right i think that mm -hmm. i think kaggle has um some stuff about like um stock market prediction and kind of like along those lines um and you can probably check out the data sets that are available there. I think there's even been some competitions that they've had. Like I think Two Sigma hosted a couple, a few competitions. And what's nice about that is that you can probably find, um, sorry, I just looked it up. Yeah, there's a competition with Two Sigma. Um, that uh, you can see what other people wrote notebooks for, um, see what people have done and get an idea a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I will say like, you know, this is, this is why like everything, like just like with Jari's thing, like it's gonna be something that's gonna be probably more than what you've learned necessarily in the curriculum. Um, but a big portion of that then will be about, hey, hey, can you do analysis? And then talking about that modeling, especially if you know in that industry, like you're saying like, oh, like what's the thing that people are using? Like you can at least talk about that and like be familiar with it. And this is where, again, like I'll tell people, your capstone doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't have to be like, oh, you implemented this from scratch and like it works great and now you're a millionaire because you can predict stocks, right? Um, but like, it's something where you can talk about it where someone who's familiar with that industry is familiar with that technology, technique, algorithm, you can talk with them and say like what issues it came across, what things you would do differently. Um, and you know, that's kind of like your goal in an interview, right? Like this is kind of like the idea of like this capstone, like so you can talk about an interview. Your goal in an interview is really to have a conversation. If you get to the point where you can have a conversation where someone's going back and forth with you, like you like got like so much higher up in their like interview process because now they're like, oh, they feel comfortable in the sense of just like, hey, like we can talk to this person about anything and we feel fine that they're gonna be doing work. Cause like, I'm sure you guys will be able to exemplify and say, hey, I'm a great worker because look at this program I just completed. Um, and this is, you know, all these different projects. But that might be a place to start is, that's one place I suggest just because of my knowledge is uh, Kaggle and just look up like anything that's related to that and like stock prediction, um, finance markets. Um, there, I know there's a couple, like I, here's a competition that I just literally pulled up. I'll send it to you guys right now, just on the chat. And this is probably relevant to Blake too, who's doing kind of, I know he's talking a little bit similar stuff, but you can find a whole bunch of stuff on Kaggle. And I know there's a lot of people in Kaggle who are very specific in this area. So something to check out, I think. But yeah, it sounds cool. Um, I, Definitely, I, I will tell you, like, I, I wish I could tell you more information about finance and stuff like that in that sense, but the most I've gotten experience is, is basically I used to work at a credit union as a software developer. Um, that's about it. <laughs> um, and that's, that's very different kind of work. Um, and some mind. analysis with them, but not with marketing. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Right, if you don't mind me asking, what is your expertise? 
Hmm. I guess I haven't really talked to you guys about my background, huh? So um, real quick, um, real quickly, I'll kind of go over like what I've like where I came from. I think that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm at. Um, I went to school at UC Santa Cruz. Um, I did physics was my major. Technically minor in math, but really it's almost a double major. It's a little sore point for me. I missed one class, complex analysis, which I'll say it's kind of BS because I do complex analysis all the time with like physics. So anyway, that was like my background was physics and math. Um, did uh, grad work as a f computational physics. And that's really like between my junior to like grad school years is where I got exposed to data science without really knowing that I was doing data science, um, which people are like, what? And that's because basically like I wasn't familiar with the field at all and neither was my professor. And so I actually used, um, you guys know how you use Jupyter Notebook? I used the precursor of that, which is IPython. I don't know if anyone's familiar with IPython. Um, that's actually why all the notebooks are called .ipnb. They're IPython notebooks. So I was using back in the terminal of just IPython. So that's kind of my background. Um, basically doing data science, they're doing a general regression analysis uh, for different you know, physics and actually working with an ecology professor, um, trying to basically make predictions of like how, um, basically like sort of salmon population and stuff like this with what they were trying to like improve rivers and nests and stuff for salmon basically to come up. Anyway, that was kind of like where I was in school. Um, left school and I decided, you know, like I, well, I always, while I was in school, I was doing some teaching, like kind of in the background learning how to teach. And I ended up saying, well, if I had an opportunity to teach, I would take it. And so I was, so I ended up being um, a science lab teacher for an elementary to middle school. Um, and while I was doing that, I was doing some contract work, kind of just like on the side a little bit. Um, eventually after a couple of years, I was kind of like, you know, teaching is great, but I kind of want to move back into industry right now. So I actually worked um, at a credit union for a while as a software developer, and then just ended up doing more um, freelance work, doing more data analysis and stuff like this, more focused on marketing and such, like with marketing data. Um, and coming out of there, I worked with UC Berkeley with um, their boot camp um, for basically data analytics, data science. Um, and then eventually I came here, um, where now I used to. <laughs> I used to do a lot more contract work. Contract work is a little um, on the thin side right now with all the stuff going on. Um, just because people don't really want to spend that extra money right now while they're going through a global pandemic. Um, and also it's kind of been like, it's kind of been a nice thing to know that it's not as easy to find contract work because I'm also focusing on my babies, but that's kind of been my background of like doing different things, mostly interacting. Like my most full-time jobs have been either teaching or focusing on software development. Um, but then I would do a lot more like contract work that's more data science focused or data analysis focused. So that's in the background. And now I've been here for the past, in Flatiron for the past year and a half. So I guess that kind of gives you a little bit of idea of where I'm at. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm seeing what time it is. Anyone else want to share one last thing, what they're doing before we kind of start finishing up? If, I don't know if anyone's volunteer or Heather wants to pick on someone or we don't have to, like, I don't, I, I'm not a huge fan of people uh, forcing people to do things. Um, though if we just forced Heather, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I, I guess mine's similar to Heather. Uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, so I plan on doing some kind of uh, either, I'm in between two things. One is some kind of algorithmic stock trader basically where I would have Python kind of manage a portfolio of different positions uh, things of that na nature. Uh, I wanted to be able to basically automatically put in orders, execute orders, and adjust uh, the portfolio as need be just throughout time. Just probably execute some kind of basic strategy on that. Uh, or um, I would do some kind of uh, equation solver, handwritten equation solver, meaning like I can write out a simple, you know, maybe 2x squared equals, you know, whatever. And it would go ahead and recognize it and solve it. So say if I was, I don't know, somewhere and I wanted to write an equation down real quick and I could just take a picture of it, upload it to a web app and the web app would spit out the, uh, what, the solved version. Cool. Yeah, those are some really interesting ones. Uh, that equation solver, I, I think I'll say like that can take a lot more 
it'll, it'll be a lot more than what we've done in curriculum. Like, for example, like object detection and using like, for example, I think like OpenCV, for example, would be probably a quick, like one you'd probably go into. There's, that's a whole section of like computer vision, like know that people can take literally, you know, years of like talking about computer vision, what that looks like. Um, so that's the only reason why I say that. Um, and then there's the solver part that might be, that might be a little tougher to do. Like essentially like how, like I know there's techniques and stuff like this. Um, now I would say is that if you're looking for a data science job, even a machine learning job, engineer job, I think I personally wouldn't recommend that direction. Not that it's not cool and everything like that and be a cool project. Um, it's just that I think it'd be harder to kind of like gear that towards like something that's like, oh, here's my, here's me showing my data science skills, if that makes sense. I think it ended up being like okay. a set of, a different set of skills. Um, now, don't knock it in the sense of being like, you should never do this project. Um, like if after this graduation, like, you know, I really want to try that out, you know, like, yeah, go for it, right? Because it could, you could learn skills that can be related to what you want to do later on and stuff like this. But I think directly, like the correlation is like, that's probably not your best, like, um, what's it called? Like, it, it's probably not the best thing to bet on, if that makes sense, if you like, okay. say what kind yeah, of project. I, I, that makes sense. And right now the goal is to graduate here and get a job. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> feedback definitely. And, and that's why I try to, I get you guys, I try my best. Like, I'm like, I don't want to like restrict your creativity, but I also want to think like, all right, what will work well for you guys when you guys start looking for your job and everything. Um, the finance one, for example, um, I think that one's interesting. Like you're saying like, oh, implementing something to talk there. I would say is depending on the job you're doing, if you're looking, I know you're talked about looking into going to, uh, <laughs> see if got that up for a second, uh, uh, finance tech and yeah, stuff sorry, like that. I kicked off, I had to pause it. <laughs> no worries. Um, so if you're looking to go in that direction, and this, I think this is a good important part to like, talk to people about is try not to focus too much on more of the computer science, software development side, unless that's something that you think that you should have for whatever direction you're going. And the reason why I'm saying this is because um, if you're using Flatiron, your skills you guys learned here to say, hey, look what I learned. Give me a job based on kind of like how we match up really well, if that makes sense. Like, how do I say this? Like, could you apply for a software engineering job? Yeah, I think a few people could probably apply for a software engineering job. But is that what you want to do with what you learned from Flatiron? And like, if you want to, like, all power to you. But I would say if you are thinking about like, hey, data science, machine learning engineer, or something along those lines, um, even data analysts, like if they're going in that direction, um, you'd want to make sure your project is geared towards that. And the software engineering aspect is one of those things where it's really easy to be like, oh, this is what you should do. Um, like this, like, oh, I just need to do this. And like, it turns out that becomes like the major part of the project versus focusing on the data part. Um, it's, yeah, it's, and uh, I totally, that's good because it's really kind of telling myself to focus on the strategy part and show why, why this strategy is better than this strategy or something like that. And then also as Heather was talking about earlier, there's gonna be a lot of times there's series analysis uh, based on different say technical indicators and stuff like that. You know, a lot of rolling moving averages uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think that might be, if you need to focus on part, I would say focus on that part because okay. that will be, at least for data science stuff, like that will be easier to talk about where if you're interviewing for a data science role or something similar to that, that's the thing they're gonna talk about, not so much about the Python implementation of like the API. If you find something that works really well and you can show it off, cool. That's kind of like what dashboards are. Dashboards aren't necessarily, like in, like in my opinion at least, not the necessary part because a lot of times you're never gonna build a dashboard with the specific technology that they ask for, or like that you're, sorry, that you're familiar with. Um, but it can help your project get like a little extra shine to it, right? It helps look good. Um, but it's probably not gonna be the thing that helps get you that job specifically, if that makes sense. So, yeah, cool. Um, sorry, everyone, I just, oh, go ahead, Megan. Do you have any advice for just, I still have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I was like thinking about doing something like along the lines of like, insurance fraud but mm -hmm. all the data sets i can find are like on statista and you have to pay do you know like where would you can find stuff that you don't pay or like where you can illegally get statista stuff for free 
Yeah, um, I think <laughs> a good place to look is probably like, I, I keep saying Kaggle, but I do know there is a data set in there of finance data that talks about fraud. And mm -hmm. only reason I know that's because a student did that. Um, so that might be a place to start. I don't know if you searched already like through Kaggle and see what's available. On yeah, there. I find one insurance fraud thing, but they've already, with a credit card fraud, I can't remember which one it was, but they had, it's, card it's card already, card. It's, it's kind of like, um, it's already kind of been anonymized and then like PCA's already been done in it and stuff. So what you're getting is not really like start from mm -hmm. scratch, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's tough to get real finance data, unfortunately, because yeah. no one really wants to share that information mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, and that might be something to think about a little bit of like how you want to do this, if like what you want to focus on. And I think, yeah, maybe maybe think about that a little bit. And I'll, I'll look a little bit for you too. Maybe I'll have something mm -hmm. for you tomorrow, like we can look okay. at. Um, but I sorry, I do have. To, I realize I have another meeting I have to go to, um, and I totally forgot about it. Um, so I'm actually a little late. Um, but if you guys have any more questions, I'm sorry we didn't, like take everyone's time to like talk about more stuff. If you have any more questions, throw it up on Slack, right? We'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, know that we're going to move this study group right by a couple hours, right? So I'll make sure to update the calendar and I'll remind you guys too on the, um, on Slack. Okay. All right. Sorry to cut off so abruptly like that. Um, and Megan, we'll definitely talk more about that and I'll, I'll message mm -hmm. you. All right. Okay. Cool. All right, everyone. Thank you. Take care.